as Ed said, Ross, a mixed bag, adding 14 and a half million new subscribers to Disney Plus. The bulk of those came from India, others from uh, other countries, and just 100,000 new subscribers from the U.S. and Canada. What's your take? Well, I don't look at this mixed bag at all. I look at this as blowout results. I mean, you're looking at Netflix struggling to add subscribers and the tremendous co co you know, competition in the streaming business. And Disney's still growing tremendously, not only Disney Plus, but Hulu as well, and ESPN Plus. So when you look at their streaming business, although it's losing still a lot of money, the future looks very bright for that. And Disney was a great company before streaming. And What's really exciting about the earnings report is the parks are back with over $2 billion of profits and 500 million of it just from consumer products at the park. So, you know, the operating results of this company have improved dramatically. Right, sort of a broad-based recovery that we're seeing. We've been listening into Bob Chapek, the CEO on the earnings call. Let's take a quick listen to some of what he's had to say. And significant subscriber growth at our streaming services which added 15.5 million subscriptions in the quarter, including 14.4 million Disney Plus subscribers, of which 6 million were core Disney Plus and 8 million were Hotstar. As of the close of Q3, we now have 221 million total subscriptions across our streaming offerings. Hotstar, by the way, is that service that's offered mostly in India. What do you make of, you know, the addition of this ad-supported tier? It's something that we were expecting. Netflix is doing it as well. Does, you know, Disney potentially have something on Netflix here when it comes to an ad-supported model? Um, no, I think actually it'll be more beneficial for Netflix, the ad-supported model, because uh, for many reasons. But I think for Disney, because they have you know, networks and, and cable channels and stuff. So you're sort of competing against yourself a little bit from the ads or you're spreading your ads on another property. It's a little bit more complex for them, but it just allows more consumers to watch the content they're making, which is a net positive because they sell through so many other things uh, to the fans, whether it's going to the park or products and such. So for Disney, the most important thing, you know, I don't love Bob Chapek, but he's proving he's a great operator during difficult times. He's not an exciting guy, but he's got the theme park, the profit drivers of the business back. And the losses that they're driving from Disney Plus will ultimately turn to gains over time. So I think they're managing the business pretty well. And, and you know, there's no recession at Disneyland, I can tell you that. <laughs> so what are you looking for in the coming quarter? Obviously, when it comes to streaming, it all comes down to content. Of course, Disney has a huge library, but, you know, there's been some concern about how much of the content will continue to appeal to adults, something that Netflix uh, may be doing a little bit better. You know, how do you think about those two players in a rapidly evolving streaming environment? So, so I'm still having trouble calling myself an adult, even though I'm 51 <laughs> and a half today. Um, and as an adult, I watch Disney Plus the minute, you know, Obi-Wan was a great show. I mean, the minute they drop anything, Star Wars, I watch it. I, 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 you know, what am I supposed to do? So I don't think they have a lot of trouble and they've got Hulu for, for really adult content, but they just recently dropped some R-rated movies on D Disney Plus, like Deadpool, which are, are great content. But, you know, it's really a high quality set of assets on Disney Plus and Hulu is much more like television. So they really are appealing to lots of different demos and I don't think they lose the older demo at all. And parents like me absolutely trust Disney content with my kids. And, you know, just recently I took YouTube away from them because YouTube shorts has become the garbage hole of hell. And I don't want my kids watching garbage hole content. And if I put them on Disney Plus, there's nothing they can watch that's bad. So I think parents really trust the brand and, and, and that's starting to really pay off for them. That's quite uh, a way to describe YouTube kids oh. as a mom. Can you, can you expand on that? I'm not YouTube kids, YouTube shorts. You know, YouTube they shorts, added, can you expand yeah. on that? Yeah, see what's happened is all the, the creators on TikTok are now posting on, on uh, YouTube Shorts. And YouTube Shorts is basically TikTok. And what they're getting now is lower quality content that now switches between so many different topics where, you know, I monitor my kids' YouTubes because uh, they watch gamers and, and they'll watch Unspeakable and that's fine, but then it'll flip them to a video of, you know, like a Russian family, that, you know, exploiting their children, throwing them in the pool or something. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing, you know? So 
with shorts, I can't monitor it. And in two minutes, it's in, it's a garbage hole of content. It's just garbage. Um, last quick question before you go, because I, I want to get your thoughts on Tesla. We saw Elon Musk sell $7 billion worth of Tesla shares. He's saying it's to potentially uh, shore up his finances if he has to do this Twitter deal. You know, as this continues to evolve, how are you looking at this as a Tesla investor? Well, as a Tesla investor, the sooner he can be done with Twitter, the better. Um, but what if he is forced to buy it? What if he has to buy it? Um, it's weird to think about forcing somebody to buy a company where everybody at that company hates your guts. So nobody at Twitter wants to work for Elon. That, those days are over. This is a disaster. Elon's in a disaster. He sold the stock because he might be liable for $10 billion of damages. And so... Twitter, the reason the stock's up, might end up getting a check for billions and billions of dollars so Elon can get out of this. But forcing him to buy the company would even be a worse outcome for everybody involved. And so I don't know if that's the court's intention. It's really to rectify the damage he's caused through this ill-fated merger. So this is a tough time for Elon, and, and it's really all him. Fortunately, he's the richest man in the world, so he can afford to lose $10 billion. But I think from a Tesla perspective, the sooner this is over, the better.